Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, let's take a look at a buoyancy problem um, and let's, uh, let's make it pretty complicated, okay? Let's say we have uh, the following. Let's say we are hanging a spring from the roof and then on the bottom of that spring, we hang a metallic cylinder. And then directly beneath the cylinder, we have a big box full of water. All right, now we attach this such that the spring is at its equilibrium length when the cylinder is just at the surface of the water. And then we let it go, all right? What's it gonna do? Well, gravity is of course going to pull that cylinder down. It's going to go into the water, buoyancy and the spring force is gonna push it back up. It's gonna oscillate a little bit. And finally, it'll all settle down and it'll come to some sort of equilibrium. And what we need to figure out is, what is that equilibrium distance? How far down does it finally sit in the water? Okay, so this is the before picture. The after picture looks something like this. Here's our spring. And now the cylinder is submerged partway in the water. All right, and we want to figure that distance right there, let's call that H. So, how do we do this? Well, when it comes to equilibrium, what can we say? We can say that all the forces are gonna add up to zero. So in equilibrium, we have the sum of the forces in the y direction have to add up to zero. We're not worried about any x direction forces here. So what are those forces in the y direction? Well, let's think about the free body diagram for this thing. There's our cylinder. We have a bit of stretch from that spring, it's trying to pull it back up. And the amount of stretch is in fact just equal to K times H, right? That's how far the string, uh, the, the spring got stretched out. What else is acting on the cylinder? Gravity is of course acting down on the cylinder, trying to pull it towards the earth. And there's one more thing that's acting on the cylinder, and that is the buoyant force up from the water, okay? So what are the sum of the forces? It is KH plus B minus MG. All of that has to equal zero. Now, we're looking for H, but what we don't know in this equation is what's the buoyant force and what is the mass in terms of the parameters of the cylinder. All right, so let's take the easy one first, right? If they give us the radius of the cylinder, as R, and they give us the length of the cylinder as L, then we can calculate the volume, and we know that the mass is just the density times the volume. So the density is whatever it's made of, steel. What is the volume of a cylinder? Well, if I think about the area of one end, it's the area of a circle, which is of course pi r squared, and then I just have to multiply by the length so that the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times L. All right, that gets us the mass of the cylinder, and let's see if we can now figure out what the buoyant force is. 
Okay, the buoyant force, B, is just equal to the weight of the displaced water. Okay, the weight of the displaced water, which is the density of water times the volume of the displaced water. Now, as the cylinder goes into the water, it displaces more and more water, and so the buoyant force increases. How do we calculate the volume of the displaced water? Well, it's the volume of the portion of the cylinder that is underneath the water. And that is the radius squared times pi times how much is underneath the water, which we already said was a distance h. All right, so now we've got the buoyant force. We have the mass of the water. We would be given the spring constant. It looks like we have everything we need to solve for the height h. Let's see if we can put all this stuff together and do it. Okay, so let's start with our equation. We had some of the forces in the y direction was kh plus b minus mg. All that was equal to zero. And now we can substitute in what we wrote for the buoyant force b. We said that was density of the water times pi r squared h. We're going to subtract mg, which was rho of the cylinder, let's call it steel, times pi r squared times l, all of that equals zero. So we need to solve this equation for h. It's not too bad. We have h times the quantity k plus rho h2o pi r squared. I'm gonna move this stuff over to the other side. So this equals rho steel pi r squared times L. And finally, you can solve this for H. We get rho steel pi r squared times L all over K plus rho H2O pi r squared. So let's look at this answer for a second and see if it makes sense. We've got the density of steel on the top. So if the density of the cylinder goes up, it says H goes up. That means it sinks further into the water. That makes sense. It also says that if the spring K gets stronger, then since it's on the denominator, h gets smaller. It doesn't sink as far. And that makes sense too, right? If, if the spring is stronger that's holding it up, it's not gonna fall down as far into the water. Okay, so I think we have basically the right solution here. And if you have all these numbers, you can plug them in and give them a shot. All right, hopefully that's clear. If not, come see me in my office. Cheers.